What's going on guys, it's Unknown Player here and today, once again we've been going over the latest Destiny news and some of the things coming up soon for the game to be aware of, like the challenge mode for the raid and what to expect from it, and everything we know so far about challenge mode itself, also some official info from Bungie about the new exotic skins or ornaments, and how they actually tie into upcoming events for Destiny as well. So Deej actually talked about the future events and the ornaments and how they actually tie into each other. He mentioned that it's no secret that Festival of the Lost will return and very soon you will learn exactly how and when the Guardians celebrate the memories of the Lost Souls, meaning Festival of the Lost, and also that there are already previews in game that you can see Bad Juju, which we know of, and of course Bungie Help already said the Bad Juju ornaments will be available when Festival of the Lost launches. So he also said that this winter we can expect more ornaments for Red Death and Thorn and these are still in development but they showed them off as you can see on screen right now. He said that these could change before we get a chance to equip them ourselves in game when they actually launch in the winter but this is an early look at them on their workbench what they currently look like. So as you can see we have a white one which is actually called the White Witch that's the name of the ornament and you can see it's like painted white but covered in blood everywhere really dark looking. And there's also this one which is called the Steel Witch and this one's got like a bunch of spikes all over it and like a gold strip and you can see how they've both been modified. And they also showed off both of the thorn ornaments as you can see here this is the Rose of Acid you can see it's actually been like acid burned slightly and it's got a slight different colour and this one is called the Rose of Corruption and as you can see it's literally been corrupted by evil hive energies you can see the hive rune on the handle so those are the two thorn ornaments and as I showed in yesterday's video, it is possible now to actually glitch your current weapons and show these. Not sure if Bungie is going to hotfix it, but you can actually get a sneak preview of these ornaments on these two weapons. And as you can see, they've actually changed the Red Death one slightly, the Steel Witch. If you view it in-game, it will look slightly different to this one they've shown off. So as Bungie said, they are still work in development and they're going to look different in-game. So they're still temporary and they're probably going to look slightly different and more improved when we finally get them in-game. So they also said that before the end of 2017, the last word and the black spindle will also get in on the festive action, and this year is racing to a close, there are still some more special occasions to celebrate and experience in the game. So I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that, maybe there's going to be another third event thrown in there, besides festival and of course SRL Sparrow Racing in that winter event. They kind of suggested that Bad Juju will be coming in the Festival of Lost event, and then the Thorn and Red Death will be coming in the winter event, and then sometime before the end of 2016, the Last Word and Black Spindle will also get on festive action and have their ornaments displayed as well. So I'm not sure exactly when this third event is going to be taking place, but it seems like as they go on, these ornaments are going to be slowly drip fed to us and more are going to get released. So the next thing Bungie said is that there are some challenges we know about and some that we don't. So I'm not sure if they're just talking specifically about challenge mode or maybe some other event that we don't know about they're keeping as a surprise. But as usual they're being very cryptic about the future apart from the things we know about so far. They all said that once Festival of the Lost is over they're going to announce and launch the challenge mode of the raid. So we actually got some slight bits of info about the challenge mode so far. I want to explain what actually is and how it's going to work. So for those of you that don't know, the challenge mode is basically doing an encounter in the raid in a certain way. It's not like new mechanics, you don't have to go into orbit and select the raid in challenge mode. You're still doing the same normal or hard, but the challenge is something you can do on top of it as an optional thing to get more loot. You can do the encounters in a certain way and get guaranteed loot at the difficulties cap. So the normal mode challenge will guarantee 385 gear and the hard mode will guarantee 400 light level gear if you complete that encounter during the challenge. Of course you'll also get the perfected ornaments for your raid armor from the challenge mode as well. So for those of you asking where you actually get the ornaments from, this is your source from the challenge mode. And on top of that you'll probably guarantee an artifact and maybe an emblem as well the first time you complete it. In terms of loot rewards, it's easily one of the best ways you can actually rank up and you get an absolute ton of stuff. If you do the challenge mode on hard mode for example, you'll get guaranteed challenge loot, also your hard loot and of course your normal loot as well. So you get a ridiculous amount of stuff and it's easily one of the best ways to level up, definitely worth doing when it launches. Of course it is going to work in weekly rotation so each week one of the bosses is going to have that challenge modifier on it and the challenge will be available for you to do. So for a lot of people the companion app for Destiny has actually been bugged out a little bit and sometimes it would show the Vosic and Axis challenge on the actual raid completion page as if the challenge was actually live. Obviously it wasn't, it was just the app bugging out a little bit and showing something it wasn't supposed to but it did show the Vosic challenge and Axis challenge with none for the Siege engine. Technically this does actually make sense because the siege engine isn't actually a boss that you're killing, it's not a real enemy in the raid, it's more of an encounter and a situation you have to get through and fix the engine and then you kind of ride it off the wall. But technically speaking, in the raid there are two bosses, Vosik and Axis, those are the two fallen Seaver enemies you're fighting. So if this app is to be believed there might only be two challenge modes in this raid and there might not be one for the siege engine. But like I said before this app can be buggy at times so maybe it's just not showing it, there could well be a challenge for it as well. 
Now in terms of my personal speculation and guesses of what the challenges could be, based on the King's Fall challenges, they're normally relatively simple and involve doing something perfect and not missing something. So for Vosik, I can imagine maybe every bomb has to land, you can't like whiff any. Of course, normally when you miss a bomb, you just do another round, it doesn't really matter, you can recover. But I can imagine a challenge could be to not miss any of the bombs and they all have to land, that's something I thought of. Also the siege engine, if there is one, I can see something like maybe everyone on the raid team, all six of you have to have carried apart throughout the encounter and that would get you a challenge loot. As for axes, I couldn't really see many to be honest, it's very difficult to design challenges for and I would be surprised to see what they come up with. The first thing I thought of is that maybe everyone has to dunk on the fire team, that would be really crazy and probably quite cruel. I don't think they'd actually do that because that would require lots of RNG because it's completely random who gets picked to be empowered and can dunk him and it's also completely random where axes teleport so I don't think that would happen or that would be really cool. Maybe they'll do something simple like you can only use two of the pillars to stand on when he does a Siva Might. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section. What challenges can you imagine and what do you think is going to be in challenge mode? So moving on, Bungie also kind of hinted they might be doing a reveal event or an actual Twitch stream for the festival of loss. They said stay tuned, we're working behind the scenes to scare up a reveal for the party. And obviously they were talking about festival loss before that. I wouldn't have really expected them to do a massive reveal because I feel like it would ruin a little bit of the surprise and seeing the tower for the first time and all the cool stuff and everyone discovering it. But I'm not sure, it definitely did seem like they're alluding to an actual reveal event for this festival lost event. But if they do, of course, I'll let you guys know. So the final thing I want to talk about is an interview with the world's first team for the hard mode raid, which is actually a German clan. So Cosmo, one of the community managers for Bungie, did an interview with the actual leader of the clan. It was really interesting to see their strategies on how they got worlds first, which I believe took them 44 minutes as in total, start to finish the entire raid. Really impressive. So in terms of their strategies, they said they had two of each Hunter, Warlock and Titan. They split two Warlocks on the left and right so they could self-res and help out middle if they needed to. They mainly use weapons of like the Sleeper Simulant and Tether for DPS. On the Siege engine, they use the Warlock's Transversive Steps and Night Stalker Keen Scout perk to actually crouch and move faster with the parts which is really smart. And for Axis, the main way they did it so quickly is to actually pop a bubble of weapons of light on him and they all went literally ham with the Dark Drinker Exotic Sword, which did like half his health each time. So they did it in two damage cycles, really impressive. The Dark Drinker is very good for damage. It's also quite risky because you might not be in the right position and it takes a while to get everyone there. But Dark Drinker is definitely very effective. So it's really interesting to see their actual strategies and how they did the raid so quickly. But there you go, that is all the latest news and announcements from Bungie and some of the things coming up soon to expect. As always, if you enjoyed the video, a like rating would be much appreciated. And of course, stay tuned for many more videos on the channel. Subscribe so you don't miss out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.